fearless organizer, a humanitarian, a man whose wit, charm, personality, passion, and commitment created one irresistible and dynamic leader. He was none other than our own Michael J. Quill, founding father of the Transport Workers Union of America. An Irishman to the core, Mike Quill was born in Kilgarvin on September 18, 1905. He was raised in turbulent times, nurtured by the Irish Revolt and a fighter in Ireland's tragic civil war. He was a born leader, staging his first sit-in strike as a young man at the Kenmar Sawmill. For his efforts, Quill was blacklisted as both a defeated Republican fighter and a sacked industrial activist. Penniless, he headed for America, where life for Quill and for transport workers would soon be changed forever. Quill found work on the independent subway line in New York City among thousands of immigrant Irishmen. Together they endured appalling working conditions, long hours, and low pay. He held various other jobs until becoming a change maker on the Interborough Rapid Transit Company, the IRT. Times were tough, and the 12-hour, seven-day work week was all too common. During those 12-hour nights, we chat about the mortarmen, conductors, and guards whose conditions were even worse. I also saw Catholic ticket agents fired by Catholic bosses for going to Mass early in the morning. Protestant bosses fired Protestant workers for similar crimes, going to church. The Jewish workers had no trouble with the subway bosses. Jews were denied employment in the transit lines. The new IRT employee worked almost all of the change booths in the system, and while he did so, began to organize the workforce. Quill would set up his signature soapbox at lunch hour at the powerhouses or in the shops. It was these daily shopgate meetings which helped make him a popular figure on the transit property. We were no experts in the field of labor organization, but we had something in common with our fellow workers. We were all poor. We were all overworked. We were all victims of the 84-hour week. In fact, we were all so low down on the economic and social ladder that we had nowhere to go but up. Quill's efforts paid off as the Transport Workers Union held its first meeting in April 1934. No one was lukewarm to Mike Quill. Workers loved him. Management hated and feared him. Like him or not, no one could dispute his ability to organize. Beginning with just 400 members, Quill fought successfully to organize and represent all 14,000 employed by the IRT. In the next largest subway company, the Brooklyn Manhattan Transit BMT line, a successful sit-down strike in 37 led to more victories and brought the total union membership to 45,000. By now, Quill's political influence was also taking shape. Fully aware of the power of both organizing and politics, Quill was elected to the New York City Council in 1937. Word of Quill's organizing success quickly spread, and in the mid to late 40s, membership was extended to airline, utility, and railroad workers. From the earliest days of the union, Quill insisted that TWU stand up for all workers, regardless of race, color, or creed. And he himself led the way. Most of my life I've been called a lunatic because I believe that I'm my brother's keeper. I organize poor and exploited workers. I fight for civil rights of minorities. And I believe in peace. This is my religion. He was an unequivocal and relentless foe of all forms of anti-Semitism and relentlessly fought against racial prejudice. He staged rallies against anti-Semitism and faced down racism wherever it raised its ugly head, especially among his own members. His commitment to fight racism was evident time and again and led to a friendship with Martin Luther King early in King's crusade for racial equality. Despite all his success, Quill is probably best remembered for his role in the citywide transit strike back in 1966, a strike that brought New York City's transit system to a grinding halt. By a judge's injunction, the strike was ordered to end. 
but an ailing Mike Quill was steadfast. The judge can drop dead in his black robes. I don't care, I rot in jail. I will not call off the strike. Quill and seven other union leaders were arrested for refusing to obey the judge's order. In jail, Quill's condition worsened. He was sent to the hospital and remained there at the time when settlement was finally reached on January 13th. It was a tremendous victory. The package was worth over $60 million and included raises which would increase wages from $3.18 to $4.14 an hour. Included was another paid holiday, increased pension benefits, and other gains. Quill was finally released three weeks after his arrest. He spoke at a press conference that day and paid tribute to thousands of TWU members that night. It would be his last address. His last remaining days as TWU's fiery and fearless leader. On January 28, 1966, Michael J. Quill died. As the TWU Express reported that month, Mike Quill did not hesitate or equivocate. He died as he lived, fighting the good fight for TWU and its members. On the occasion of Quill's death, one speaker paid tribute to him. The speaker was none other than Martin Luther King. For all ages, for all time, we will never forget our founder, the fearless fighter, a true believer in our union and in all mankind.